Hello everyone, my name is Uthris, and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program. Today, we are doing something a little bit different. Um, I've been hinting at doing a little bit more of a speed build and a quick mission sort of episode here for a little while. And we're going to be getting right into it today. I'm going to go ahead and start building some, a communication network around Kerbin. Now, the communication array, um, you know, there's obviously I could do some math and try and figure out <laughs> how to get things into exact geostationary orbit or, um, you know, what's the correct distance or how many satellites do I really need. Um, and instead, I, I tend to wing this stuff. So um, we're going to go ahead and design a little probe here. Um, and I love designing these smaller vessels in Kerbal Space Program because you know, being able to cram um, a lot of little details into such a small space can be not only like challenging in a way, but very interesting uh, for me. So we're, we have just a nice simple pro body in the middle um, at the moment, some um, unfolding um, uncovered solar panels because this thing needs to look a little bit more industrial, a little bit um, less Kind of atmospheric so there's no sense having atmospheric kind of plating around these things um it's gonna have uh, multiple communication points it's gonna have its own little um kind of thruster at the bottom and its own little fuel tank also it's got plenty of batteries installed and we can kind of go from here so i'm trying to use these metal um kind of just standard struts on the side to create kind of attachment points so that we can use throw like other items onto without it um, necessarily looking too weird off the base structure and um, give the actual communication dish some body to to work with um, instead of just making it a hundred percent attached to the the core there so it just gives it you know a little bit more um, supporting material which I think is super important uh, when it comes to building anything, it's got to look like it can kind of support its own weight. Um, it's going to have also an antenna that can be extended and that can kind of take a little bit to, to find a good spot for it. Um, I figured, you know, down there might be interesting, but I kind of don't like how that's going to interact with the engine. So maybe flip it uh, around and uh, now still don't like the fact that it's upside down. So why don't we flip it up? and uh, point it vertically here um, and that that looks pretty good there on the opposite side we're going to add a little heat sink radiator and this thing um, I don't plan to actually unfold in the space mission at all it's gonna stay kind of folded up and just almost be a extra detail item um, I'm also a little bit worried at the moment, um, is these two solar panels enough to power um, my communications? Um, and since I was worried, I decided, well, why don't we just double up our how much uh, solar energy we get? So I'm going to move these down and attach another set above it, just rotated 180 and fold those out. Okay, those are the wrong panels. Let's try it again. There we go. And now with these folded out, they're gonna interact with each other in a bad way. So if I angle them and offset them a little bit, we get a little bit of an X-wing shape, uh, which I think is pretty cool. And that way um, they'll interfere with each other's um, um, kind of energy gathering a little less than normal. Um, I'm gonna throw some lights just on the probe itself, kind of highlighting those solar panels. Um, which is pretty handy, pretty good to do, I think. Um, a passive kind of antenna inside of these struts. We'll put that in there, and that is the probe. So these are going to get saved as a simple communication probe um, at the top there, and we will launch a um, kind of rocket with these attached because so, it has the docking port there. And so we'll get rid of it there and start building on the main vessel that's going to take this up into orbit. Now we're going to use a uh, kind of drone ship. This is not gonna be a crewed mission because it's just kind of 
no point in making it a crewed mission. And at the very top, we're gonna have a nice little tower here with plenty of attachment points to, um, you know, hook on to with our payload, right? So um, at the moment, this <laughs> that's a lot of bro uh, kind of pro locations on here, but um, you know, you'll you'll find out this is a little too much. In fact, our our, our um, vehicles can't be this part heavy. Um, but this packs them on there nice and tight. Um, they don't really interfere with each other too much. Um, there's just very little clipping. So I'm willing to risk having um, all these antenna on here. <laughs> welcome, welcome to 5G, everyone. This is a 5G cell tower now. And um, at the moment, of course, this is too many parts. Even just this section here, um, with all the satellite dishes on, installed is over part count. So um, if we just get rid of the top half, throw it away, um, we are left with a nice set of eight satellite dishes. And again, I didn't I didn't do any of this pre-math or anything, so I we're hoping eight is enough to kind of get a good um, coverage around the whole planet. It probably could have been done a little bit more efficiently, um, but once we get up into space, I'll kind of describe my, my thought process on, on some things. Um, we're going to use one of these new engines and attach it to an engine plate. Um, the engine plates are really nice just to get the uh, kind of cowling to line up correctly. We'll give it a nice fairing here and round that out just to protect the payload of this rocket. The control surface is set. All that looks pretty good. I can't select the, the probe. There we go. Move that up, make it look a little bit nicer because we need some, some verticality to work with down below. And at this stage, we are ready to start throwing on a um, size 18, I think, kind of fuel tank. Um, we're just gonna go with a nice solid mainsail type engine um, on the bottom here. I don't think, I think I end up using the actual mainsail because I think we, we unlocked it. Um, which is awesome. Um, heavier rocketry is going to be great for us. So that's a, the mainsail rocket engine, um, something that I haven't seen in a long time. It looks so different um, from from what I remember from playing this game years ago. So um, I'm happy they're constantly upgrading that. Oh wait, no, I changed my mind. We're going with a more simple rocket design, it seems. Um, we're we're going to try out this um, rocket engine that has a bit of a fuel tank attachment that has two uh, rocket bells. Um, I don't know the exact thrust off the top of my head on how well this will work, but we we just need to get into a relatively um, high carbon orbit to get this thing kind of settled. So we're gonna even use, I think, some solid rocket boosters on the side also. And, you know, I'm hoping the gimbling on the main body is enough to keep this thing in control. Um, it's going to be relatively light, which is great for us. Um, make sure all your staging is configured correctly. Staging, super important. Always get that right at the end here. Everything is looking pretty good. We have some new um, Sepatrons on the side. Um, um, and those, those are pretty handy for when you have things kind of sticking out from the main body, by the way. Um, I, do, I don't like to use them personally because I like everything to be nice and tight, but sometimes that's just how it goes. Kerbin, um, <laughs> I decided to look up to see if it mentions, you know, what what geostationary orbit is, but couldn't find it, so it said, screw it, we're just gonna go. Um, we don't want to accelerate too, too much here. So you can see I'm only using a quarter thrust on the main engine. We're gonna trying to get that liquid to last as much as possible while using the solid rocket boosters to get a lot of our initial um, velocity going upwards. We'll start our gravitational assist about uh, 20,000 meters up above, which is a little, probably a little late. Um, and then drop those now that they're empty and try and point sideways as much as possible. You can see our Apple apps is already at like 200,000 kilometers. So I'll even point down a little bit, get rid of our shielding. Um, to try and just increase our velocity to get into a more circularized orbit. 
Now, I don't know why I settled on 352,000 kilometers. I feel like 350,000 kilometers was, from what I remember, pretty close to or around the um, area for geostationary orbit. Um, but we have enough satellites to where we don't really need geostationary orbit. We're just going to deploy these, um, hopefully in a rapid succession, and raise and lower their their height um, in a very uniform manner. And that should keep their spacing so long as they are, you know, within a rough um, exact orbit from each other. There's going to be some drift long term. I don't know how much drift there's going to be. Um, I'm at one to sit here and calculate all that. Um, we did unlock the maneuver tool, which looks like it's a little bit more for, um, uh, if I wanted to go to like Duna or somewhere else from our current position. So we're going to warp around to Apple apps and at Apple apps, we are going to start undocking one of these. Uh, we're going to extend out the solar panels and I guess even the heat shield, um, on this one. Maybe I retract these later. Could have sworn I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't like the the imbalance that cost. Um, I just like the folded up panel. I think that looks the best. Okay, so now that that's fully deployed, we will just keep launching these at this rough location from each other. Get them all set up. Get them pointed prograde um, using SAS, which is awesome. We can even launch multiple of these at once, um, just like that. Get that prograde. Well, that's pointing kind of retrograde. I would. I would like to actually flip that around. There you go, send some antennas. I probably should have made some action groups for this. Um, I'm, <laughs> I've never actually messed around with action groups in this game, like at all. Um, and now we just have this little fleet of satellites. Um, we're gonna keep undocking them, getting them just um, free of this um, vessel because they have their own engines. They can kind of finish the final maneuver on their own. And um, to do, I think that would just keep it a very consistent um, way to make sure they're deployed roughly the same because also, man, look at that. They're drifting away from us. It looks, I don't know. I just like the, the, the undocking of all these small little probes, which is really cool. And I'll just bat that one away. That's fine. Uh, burn retrograde. We'll send the rocket back down to Kerbin and just let that burn up in the atmosphere. And at this point, the mission is basically 99% complete. We just have to extend all the panels, make sure the probes are all ready to go. They are charging um, and make sure that their electrical charge can, um, you know, make it through the dark side of Kerbin and out the other side without, you know, really any issue. And it looks like that is the case. We'll swing around back to Apogee here and go full prograde burn and we're gonna circularize this orbit. We're gonna shoot for 352,000 kilometers and some change, or 355,000 by 355,000. And we're just gonna do this one at a time. Every single little orbit, um, we're going to bring one of these satellites up into position. And what that's going to do is, because these currently don't have um, the same orbital trajectory, that's gonna give you a natural spacing around this planet. Um, I I didn't know if the natural spacing would be good enough to actually um, cover the whole planet um, at this time, but I can go ahead and tell you it is. I didn't know that. <laughs> um, and the, uh, the spacing ends up being pretty good. Um, a lot of satellite coverage, probably way too much than you actually need. Um, however, um, I'm one for overkill and aesthetics rather than a pure functionality. So again, 355,000, 0.200, 0.400 um, kind of ability. Switch over to the next probe, and we're just gonna keep doing this over and over. With uh, Kerbin in the background, um, things are looking good. We're, we're mostly gonna be sitting here in the um, kind of orbital view as we get these spun around. Um, the nice thing about having the small engine is that we can be a little bit more exact with our placement and that does make it a little bit easier to do this too. So there's another 355, about 0.300, and then we'll come over to the other side, make that kind of match. 
Retrograde that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And that's a that's a very circular orbit there. And we'll just keep going around. There's there's so many satellites to launch, and you guys will will be able to see like how much communication we're gonna have around this planet. Um, one thing that I might want to look at changing in the future around this orbit is that at the moment, all of these satellites are going essentially through our launch window and the way we leave Kerbin. Um, I wouldn't mind getting their orbital plane shifted to be more north-south or south-north. Um, that way we don't have to worry about um, really hardly any of our crafts ever coming out here and like potentially intersecting and colliding with these satellites. I don't think there's enough satellites for that to even really happen at the moment. You know, the distance between each of these are so large and you know, usually when we come out into orbit, we're not coming out this high anyways. Usually we're staying around the 100,000 or less range and then just going out from there. So, you know, it, it's probably not even an issue at the moment, but if you guys, you know, in the comments down below want me to kind of adjust that a little bit, I'd be more than happy to. Um, it's a little stressful to do this though. Um, because if I don't do this in a single orbit and get this satellite set up, um, by the time the rest of the pack reaches their previous location, um, the spacing becomes off. So you have to be able to do this um, fairly quickly and consistently around every single little orbit of Kerbin. And I got pretty good at it, I would say. Um, I'd be willing to, you know, push Apple apps up a little bit higher and then adjust it at Perigee over here on the right side if needed. Um, and then uh, just swing over to to the new Apogee and adjust the Peri app. So, you know, it ends up, once you get to do these, these maneuvers a few times, it, you, you kind of get the hang of it. There's just so many satellites to try and configure here, all, all eight of them, which seems to... Uh, I would say it's not a perfect circle around the planet, um, but it it it's pretty darn close. And I feel like like for not calculating it, and for for me not knowing what the heck I'm doing 99% of the time in this game, um, I'm I'm pretty happy with it. Um, so this is the seventh satellite, I believe, that we are positioning now, and then that final one. Uh, is going ahead of us because it is in that lower trajectory. We also have some space debris that I want to clean up eventually. Maybe we can get a, a mission just to fly up there and deorbit that space debris because I don't want to just shoot it with a missile or something. Or maybe we can make a missile and actually just run it into it. That could be cool too. Well, that might just create more debris. No, I think grabbing it and deorbiting it would be better. So you can see this is the final satellite. It's roughly in the middle between these two. I would say it's about 10% off um, the center line, but that is our full communications array. So we have a nice um, coverage around the whole planet um, and we can actually go back to Kerbin and well, after, after some nice be beautiful shots of the satellite. Yes, it's, it's a cool little design. I really like it, you know? Um, the, the tool, the double panels, you know, I, I think I should have rotated one of the panels, just one more click to make it match the bottom one. Um, but it, it, it works. It functions. Um, this might be one of my better little satellites that I've made. But if we go back to the space center, we can actually click on the tracking station and see our coverage. So that's what you want to see. You want to see that nice, um, evenish spacing across there. So that's it for this episode. If you guys enjoyed it, feel free to subscribe and we'll see you all in the next episode.